When Paul wrote the book of Philippians, he did not have to contend with COVID-19. But Paul had been through a lot in his life already. He had to deal with shipwrecks, beatings, floggings, snake bites. And actually when he wrote Philippians 4, he was in prison. And he wrote these words, Rejoice in the Lord always. And he says, I'll say it again, just in case you didn't catch it the first time, rejoice. And I don't think that would be an exception for COVID-19. Paul goes on to write, let your gentleness be evident to all. And I have to be honest, I'm struggling with that one. My aggravation, my frustration sometimes comes out lately with curtness rather than gentleness. And I need this reminder. Paul goes on to say, the Lord is here. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, with prayer and thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, it will guard your hearts and it will guard your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, my brothers and my sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right and pure and lovely and admirable, praiseworthy and excellent, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. He further writes, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have everything and I've learned the secret. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, all things are possible through God who is my strength. Those are good words for us today. This past Tuesday, the New Hope staff, some board members, and other leaders met for three and a half hours to discuss our plans and responses to the current state of affairs. Of course, our current state of affairs has become and continues to be an ever-moving target. Minimally, we wanted to accomplish about five things and then get the word out to you as quickly as possible about how New Hope will be engaged with our church family and with our community during this peculiar season of life. The things that we wanted to accomplish this past Tuesday morning were number one, provide a statement that we could publish about being Christ's church in the midst of crisis. Number two, how will we handle our regular services and Bible study options, including how can we improve our online presence? Number three, we wanted to talk through Easter Sunday, Mexico Mission, Actus Sunday, and Roundup Sunday. These are all events that are on our schedule in the next few weeks. What are some other services that we can provide to the elderly, the sick, and those who live alone in our church? And whatever else may arise between now and the coming days ahead. So let me jump right in and tell you what we did get done. Number one, we wanted to write a statement that we could put out about how we could be Christ Church in the midst of crisis. So let me say just a few things. Let's be courageous, not careless. Let's be selfless, not selfish. That means, folks, we don't need to hoard. There is not a supply problem out there. The only reason the store shelves are empty is because people are buying way too much. Plan for a week or two weeks ahead. Let people go to the store and get what they need. So let's be selfless, not selfish. Let's choose joy over worry. Let's trust God more than government. Let's read and rely on the scriptures rather than emails, Facebooks, and news outlets. Let's choose peace over panic. Let's offer hope, not despair. You see, what people need at moments like this is they need to hear calm. They need to hear hope. They need to hear stability, assurance, and direction. I've discovered over time that when uncertainty plagues us, we need to slow down, not speed up. We need to pray more and talk less. What I've discovered is the most important choices are not usually easy, but they are often quite simple. We're going to do our best around New Hope to provide a healthy environment and follow best practices, and at the same time, continue to trust God within the context of the church family. We're going to be providing options for you to choose from that will be best practices over the next few weeks and months. We're not here to make all these decisions for you, but we are here to provide you with God's wisdom and options to assist you through this awkward season. That brings us to number two and three. How are we gonna handle services over the next few weeks or months and our Bible studies? 
How are we going to deal with Easter, Mexico mission, and the various events that are already on our schedule? Let me jump in with Sunday morning. Sunday mornings for the next two weeks, the remaining days of March, we are going to continue to have three services, 8, 9, 15, and 11. We're going to continuously sanitize our environment, and we are going to do our best to provide you with proper spacing. As we discovered last Sunday, when this was just starting, our attendance was down about a third. We had a lot more room in the sanctuary than we normally do. We're also going to be adding live streaming to the 915 service. This will enable people who need to choose to stay home because of health concerns rather than get out, they can participate actively live with the service while it's going on. We will continue to post our service online as quickly as we can on Sunday afternoon, hopefully by two o'clock. For those of you who don't have access to the web or YouTube and you still are kind of stuck with DVDs and TVs, we will provide DVDs for you. You can either pick them up at the office or call the office and we will mail them to your home address. Palm Sunday was scheduled to be a kids musical. Our kids have already been working on this for a month or so. And last Sunday, all of them were still here. If our kids continue to participate in rehearsals for the next couple of weeks, they will sing on that Sunday morning. We will bring them in and out of the back door so they're not exposed to the, the general public out in the pews and we'll do our best to keep them as safe as possible. That will be a parental decision and we'll abide by what that is, but at this moment, that is still on tap. Beginning the first Sunday of April, we will have only two services. Notice the slight change of time, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. The Sunday after Palm Sunday is always Easter Sunday. And so we will have two Easter services, 9 a.m. and 11 o'clock. Our choir continues to rehearse. They are reducing their number of songs so that we cut down to how much practice time they need. And again, we will do best practices for them. Uh, I believe the band is going to be reduced. So we're doing what we can, but we will also have the 9 o'clock live stream so you can participate with us. The Good Friday service is still on schedule. We're going to do two of them five o'clock and six o'clock. They will only be 30 minutes long. When we get to what we think is a safe crowd, we will not allow any more into the sanctuary for those two events. There will be communion. We're going to arrange it so that there's limited exposure for folks. It'll be a 30 minute Good Friday service, one at five, one at six. Bible studies in small groups. Studies for men and women, we are going to be re redirecting those from their regular times of Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, and Thursday morning. And we're going to provide small group Bible studies here at the church twice a day, Monday through Friday. We're still working out the schedule and the timing. It will be the same Bible study offered at each one, and it will be added on to each week. We'll have different leaders. You'll be able to sign up for your Bible study online when the class is full, which is at 10. Uh, we'll be doing it in the bridge, so we have plenty of room to space out. But you can come and still have some extended fellowship, but we'll provide you with plenty of spacing. And so you'll need to sign up for those. That's going to start Monday, March the 30th. Next week, we'll keep you posted about how all those details are going to work out. When you come to church, we're going to ask that uh, during services and during Bible studies, rather than the usual greeting of shaking hands, that you keep an appropriate distance and wave and just give each other a very nice greeting. We also want you to know that we have other resources available to you while you're at home. I know that kids are out of school and they're going to be watching a lot of TV and playing lots of games. We would like to encourage you to connect with our Right Now Media resource. It is uh, something that you can go onto the website and log into. If you don't know how to do that, you can call Corey Gallardo or Teddy Miller or the office and they will explain to you how to connect to Right Now Media. There are lots of resources there for uh, particularly children. There's lots of cartoons that are faith-based. There are small Bible studies. There are things that you can do and watch as a family. And so instead of all of your time being around entertainment, it can also be edifying. We have paid for that service. It's available free to you. So please call us and find out how you can connect to Right Now Media. We've already started. Uh, in fact, uh, on Thursday, we started our first live devotion on Facebook. Monday through Friday, starting this coming Monday, uh, we're going to be doing a three to five minute devotional. It will be on Facebook. You can watch it live or you can catch it at any time during the day on our Facebook. Let's go to Mexico Mission. 
Uh, one of the biggest events we plan for every year is sending our high school kids to Mexico for a mission experience. And one of our most exciting events is the uh, pie auction that raises funds for that event. It's when we bring our entire church family, young and old, together to participate. And because of the current state of affairs, we're having to alter those things just a little bit. There will not be a trip to Mexico this year. We have already sent $12,000 to Mexico for the project, and so the project will be completed. But it won't be our kids getting to do it. It will be some other people who live in that neighborhood. But the project will be done, and we are happy about that. Other additional funds that come in for this project will be redirected to something that we are going to do right here on the own church campus that will make a difference for our kids in the future. Details will be uh, worked out and explained to you in a few days. Um, this was a very, very tough decision, and it was not something that we did heavy-handed. Our youth leaders were involved in this process, and they're the ones who made the final call that they thought for this year this was the right thing to do. And as they made that decision, it was challenging for the rest of us to watch the tears stream down their cheeks as they had to make that very important and difficult decision. So as a result of not going to Mexico, there will not be a pie auction this Sunday night. And the reason for making that decision, because it's such a fun event for us, is we felt like that attendance would be very low under the circumstances. And number two, we've been told by several people already how difficult it is to find the supplies they need, like flour and sugar and milk, in order to prepare a lot of those refreshments. Our seniors' luncheons and the carnival that was scheduled for next month, those have been postponed, will be rescheduled for another time. We'll advise our seniors when we start back up the senior lunch, and maybe they'll kick back in with a bring your own bag, a BYOB lunch, but we'll keep you posted on that on a month-to-month -month basis. Our men's breakfast in April is being redirected to providing cooking and food for our youth who will be on site during Easter week for uh, their special project since they're not going to Mexico. And again, further explanations will be made next week. April 19th was going to be Roundup Sunday and Actus Mission Sunday. A family from our own church who have been missionaries in Uganda for the last four years and before that, they were four years in Colombia, are home right now. It's a furlough for them, it's fundraising time. Some of the churches the last two weeks that they were scheduled to be uh, raising funds in have canceled their services and this is a challenging time for them. We don't want to cancel our fundraising Sunday with the Actuses, but we will direct our, our rodeo roundup uh, to another time, but we will still have Actus Sunday. We'll be engaged in hearing what they're doing and raising funds for their return to Uganda. Number four, what services can we provide for the elderly, those who live alone and those who are sick? We have a helping hand freezer full of homemade food. It's frozen, all you have to do is put it in the oven or the microwave and heat it up. So if you have a need right now for some food brought to your house, call us at the office, we'll see that it's delivered. Cecil Spurlock, our seniors pastor, along with our office staff, are developing a calling system of how we can call every senior whether they're married or widowed, we want to call every senior and let them know that we're thinking about it this time and we are here to help them. We have folks who are volunteering to go out and do shopping or provide transportation to the hospital or doctor visits if it is needed. If you have a need and you're a senior of New Hope Church or you have a, a family member that you would like help with, please give us a call and we'll do our very best. And last of all, whatever else may arise between last Tuesday and now and over the next few weeks, what we've discovered in the last 48 hours is there are a lot of family hurtings because they had weddings planned, weddings that I was to be sharing in, and 200 and 300 guests were coming, and those weddings have been canceled. We have bride and grooms who are sad and disappointed and don't know what to do. We have people who, believe it or not, with COVID-19 going on, death still occurs. It hasn't stopped. And families want to have closure. Families want comfort. Family want their family and friends to be together to help them through this moment. And the challenges we face right now are making that almost impossible. And so we're having to be creative as well as comforting at this time. So please be praying for us as we continue to help them in these areas. Let me also mention two essential ministries here at New Hope. Celebrate Recovery and Grief Share. Those are essential services that will continue to assist people in their recovery from trauma. These are traumas that can be certainly life-changing and life-threatening. And as long as they have needs, we're going to provide those services. 
And so over the next few weeks or few months, whatever you choose to do, whether it's online worship, YouTube, showing up here, or whether you're just going to stay home and do nothing, there are some key practices that we need to continue to engage in. We need to <coughs> cover our cough. We need to wash our hands frequently and thoroughly. Certainly, if you are sick, please stay home. Also, if you do get out, guard your space. And if you do show up at church, I want to add one additional one. Let's not shake hands for a while. Let's just nod and wave at each other. Last night, as our leadership team was finalizing this approach, the governor of California added a new dynamic to this ever-changing scenario. But I believe that God's church down through the centuries has provided essential services to all of its communities. You see, the church is where the sick often come to pray. It's where the lost have shown up for direction. It's where the discouraged and depressed have come to look for hope. It's where the angry and the frustrated have found peace. God's word and worship changes our focus from the turbulent circumstances around us to create fear to the changeless nature and wonder of a timeless God who tells us that we are not forgotten, we are not abandoned, and that we have everlasting life. Death, no matter how it may come or when it may come for us, it does not have to have the last word. So new hope will adjust, we will broaden our options, but we cannot close our doors. I look forward to sharing more about God's best for us in these moments in Sunday Sermon. However you choose to participate in that, whether it's in person, live streaming, or YouTube, let's continue to be the church together. As a leadership staff here at New Hope, we will continue to prayerfully modify and adjust as the days go by and as the circumstances shift. We will do this through emails and Facebook and phone calls and any other way that we can possibly imagine to keep New Hope connected. But most important of all, we want New Hope to continue to be the church during these challenging days. Maybe the best way to bring this rather lengthy monologue to a conclusion is with a quote that used to be on our bulletin every single week. It was even on our original website almost two decades ago. You see, it was our mission and vision statement when two churches 28 years ago merged together to what we now know is New Hope. This statement was good for us then. I believe it's even better for us now. And with these words, I'll close. To all who mourn and need comfort, to all who are weary and in need of rest, to all who hurt and you need healing, to those of you who suffer and need prayer, to all who sin and need a savior, to all who fail and need victory, to all who are lonely and need a fellowship, this church opened wide its doors, and we offer to you new hope in the name of Jesus, our Lord.